Really? How, and, why why so much of a difference? There? Well, that's where you get that nose and that flavor that you're experiencing. Okay. And uh, so the longer the mash tanks, if you can be that patient, you will end up with a really good mash yeah, and awesome. a great I've never, I've definitely never tasted anything like this. this I'm really glad nice. you like yeah. it. Glad you like it. All right, well, we are back here at the Art of Alcohol with Venture Cafe. This is the Bourbon Friday Show. I'm Nick Niehaus, and I'm talking to Lynn from Edelbron. And we're going to try a fruit brandy, right? That's right, yeah. All right, so tell me about this fruit brandy. Well, Edelbron Pure Distilling is my company. Okay. Uh, my husband is Swiss, oh, okay. and so he's the distiller of these spirits. Very cool. Um, I was just in Switzerland like three months ago. All right. Awesome. Well, yeah. then you hopefully you tried something like this. Uh, well, we'll find out. I got, I got to taste it first. Yeah. So a European style fruit brandy is one that is 100% fruit. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have anything in it but yeast and water. So there, everything you're going to taste is from the fruit itself. Okay. The aromatics, mm -hmm. the flavor. And we don't add any chemicals. There's no flavor. There's no extra additions of any chemicals, any essences. Um, and so, what you're tasting is only what the fruit can give. Really? Okay. Uh, the other mark of a fruit brandy is that it's unaged, and so okay. you don't have any influence of the barrel, whether it's from the oak or the char inside the barrel. So all you're tasting is what the fruit can give you. And then the third thing is it's dry. So these have sweet notes. But what you're going to taste is, again, just what the fruit can give, and we'll see what you think of it. Very cool. That yeah, sounds very unique, so I'm excited to try it. I've got six products. Okay. We're going to try the grappa. Grappa, This okay. is our version of a grappa, so this is 100% fruit. Um, this is a Chardonnay grape, and if I were pouring in your home tonight, I'd be pouring to the widest part of the bowl. Okay. That would be about a one ounce pour, gotcha. and we would spend 15 to 20 minutes sa savoring that. Savoring that, okay. Well, so tell me about these glasses too, because these are these are really beautiful and interesting. Is these, it, what, what's the purpose of the, the shape of this glass? Sure, here? this is a European style nosing glass. Okay. So these are actually grappa glasses that we import from Italy. Okay. And we would pour to the widest part of the bowl. They're made so you can cradle them. Mm -hmm. The warmer right. the spirit gets, the more aromatic it becomes. All right. And if you've never tasted a fruit brandy, the first thing you want to do is get it under your nose. And so you just want to smell it and see if you can pick up on that Chardonnay grape. Okay. Now we do our grappa a little bit differently. We have an infusion of dill in there. Oh yeah. So yeah, you yeah. might be able yeah, to smell something the botanical. Else. Yeah, there was something else there. Yeah. But I was like, okay, oh, yeah, it doesn't exactly smell like I would have was expecting it. So it's, yes. it's the dill. It is the dill. And it's very common for Swiss distillers to play with botanicals. Okay. And so my husband likes dill. That's why it's in there. When you go to taste your first sip, mm -hmm. you want to ba basically make it a small sip, let it spread across your mid palate, okay. and then give it a little bit of air. Again, you don't have the influence of the barrel, so you need it to open up just a little bit. So go ahead and gotcha. take your first right, sip and see what you think. Try. These are proofed between 80 and 84. If we were proofing this for a European crowd, we would be proofing this at 86. They like that heat. Okay. But we take it down a little bit for the American palate. Wow. And uh, what you're tasting here is 100% Chardonnay. We also make one with 100% Norton, 100% Noiré, and also a blend. Now, what you're tasting here also just got back from an international competition. Oh, really? It brought back 93 points, and it was a finalist. Wow. So, Congratulations. Thank you very awesome. much. The distiller was smiling for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, yeah. He really well, enjoyed so, it. So tell me a little bit about your brand and your company, because I, I, you told me before the show that you don't make many of these bottles every year, so it's we pretty don't. exclusive stuff. Yeah. So we make about 1,200 bottles a year. Once they're sold, they're gone. Okay, um, uh, that's, that's we, very few. I mean, overall, like that's the process is pretty hand uh, hand involved. So we okay. start with the fruit. Every piece of fruit gets touched at least three times. Uh, the first year we produced our spirits, we used about 500 pounds of apples. Okay. Uh, to this year, we will produce about 11,400 pounds of fruit mash. Gotcha. So it takes a lot of fruit to make one of these bottles. It's about eight to nine pounds of grapes in this bottle wow, right okay. here. These are Missouri grapes. Uh, wherever we can get our grapes locally or our mm. fruit locally, we do that. Um, so we get our grapes and our apples inside Missouri. The rest of the fruits come off of the West Coast. So we prep the mash by uh, cleaning it, removing the stems, 
This grappa is the only thing we keep the stem in because okay. traditional grappa is made with the whole stem. Okay. And then we uh, mash it down. We add our yeast and our fruit, okay. our, our yeast and our water, and then we end up with this really clunky, ma you know, mash Sounds mixture. Like it, yeah. huh. And then it's all up to the fermentation. So our fermentation times vary. For this, it's four to six weeks. Okay. For our apple, it's up to ten to twelve months. Really? How, well, why? Why so much of a difference? There? Well, that's where you get that nose and that flavor that you're experiencing. Okay. And uh, so, the longer the mash tanks, if you can be that patient, you will end up with a really good mash yeah, and awesome. a great I've never, spirit. I've definitely never tasted anything like this. this I'm glad really you nice. like yeah. it. Glad you like it. And so, traditionally, these are served after dinner as an after dinner drink or a digestif. Okay. If you want to mix it up, and a lot of cocktail um, mixologists uh, really play with these, uh, they'll add gins and vermouths and play and just really create some beautiful cocktails. Sure. But a simple way to enjoy these is to do a four ounce pour of prosecco and okay. then dash one to two teaspoons of any of these on top, and they're delightful. Yeah, a nice, nice way to serve it after dinner or before dinner. So if I'm honest, it's the first time I've heard of fruit brandy, right? Yeah. So I mean, is this something that, are, are you one of the only brands in, in the U.S. making this or is it catching We're on, certainly or? one of the few in the Midwest. Okay. Most of these, okay. if you saw these, if you were to find a lot of these, they would be on either the Northeast Corridor or on the West Coast where you've got the Big Orchard. Gotcha. So Clear Creek Distillery is a beautiful um, uh, producer of these fruit brandies. I think they have over 30. Okay. Uh, but they are dealing in much larger quantities. So their mash tanks are thousands of pounds of mash. Gotcha. Ours are 14. So we can afford to leave these in mash tanks for a long time. They have about a 10 day fermentation period to two weeks. Okay. Ours can go up to 10 to 12 months. Wow. And so we really depend on babying those mashes. When we get ready to distill, we do a double distillation. So, um, and it's literally coming off of a 12 or an 18 gallon copper pot still, a little more than a drop at a time, wow. over about six and a half hours. Sounds wow. like a very painstaking process. <laughs> it is. Yeah, but it's, we love making them and we love introducing people to them. These are meant to really, after dinner, to just linger over. Yeah. And so when you've got a good meal behind you and you just want to sit at the table, you pull you these out and you're just enjoy, sipping yeah. something to really enjoy and extend the evening. Yeah, that's awesome. So, like I can envision it right now yeah. after Thanksgiving dinner, you know, oh, down to enjoy it. It's wonderful. Um, so we have six products. This is one of them. We also have apple infused with plum. Okay. We also have a pear, a cherry, a plum, and a an apricot. Okay. And uh, so I'm glad you tried them. No, it's delicious. Oh, no. And I have to ask now, if somebody wants to get their own bottle, where yes. can they do that? They can either order direct from us, okay. or we are in about 15 locations here in St. Louis. If you go to our website, Edelbron Pure Distilling, you'll be able to find us. And then we are also out in Kansas City. We oh, actually have a large nice. presence out in Kansas City. Very Same cool. thing, it's on our website. All right, yeah. well, I like it. Well, obviously go out and check it out, and I want to thank you, Lynn, so much thank for joining us much. tonight. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank and you Eric, as much, always, Eric. thanks for being yeah. here. Yeah. And uh, I think we are getting close to wrapping up, but I think I heard we might have one more guest for you. So if you are tuning in, please join us in a few more minutes, and thanks for watching us. We'll see you soon. Hey, thanks for watching. We truly hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share this episode, and if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. To stay up to date, follow us on social. We are at Bourbon Fridays on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. See you next time.